Well, you know, that is such a great word that Dawn shared that mm -hmm. God does love us and he wants to bless us. And, you know, sometimes my hindrance or I'm the problem with um, not having God's blessing in my life. So I just want to encourage you that God does want to bless you and me. And in that, I want to now go and talk to you about Teresa Shields Parker. She is our guest today, and she has lost a lot, a lot of weight, that is. She's here to share about her 250-pound weight loss and keys to a healthy lifestyle. Teresa, welcome to Real Life. Thank Yay. you. Yay. We're so glad you're here. Oh, you have such an amazing I story. I know. I know. Well, Amanda and I were just talking about, we want you to start off and to share with us, introduce yourself to our family. Tell us a little bit about where you're from and, and how it all began for you. Well, I'm from Columbia, Missouri, mm -hmm. and um, I've, I've been a journalist all my life. Um, I also do foster care and uh, for uh, mentally challenged individuals. But um, basically, I grew up in a uh, Christian home. My dad was a pastor, you know, good Christian girl, did everything right, you know, d d followed all of the no's, you know, don't drink, don't smoke, mm -hmm. don't do, you know, don't do anything. <laughs> Except, you know, food was not an issue. Mm -hmm. Food wasn't on that list. Food was okay, you know. That's what you could use for comfort, for protection, for anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how things built in my life. So it started your, the weight gain started as a child? You know, uh, when I look back at my pictures of me as a child, I, did, I don't look overweight, but I always felt overweight. Mm -hmm. And I was always like a size bigger than the other kids in my classroom. You know, maybe I was... In first grade, I looked like a second or third grader. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was always out growing my clothes. And th that message just kept replaying in my head that, you know, there was something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I noticed one thing in uh, reading your book, Sweet Grace, which is a wonderful read and very life changing, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, you seem to look at situations that happened in your life, you know, and so for our viewers out there, you know, the addiction to no matter what it is, can you talk about some of the life experiences you went through that promoted you into the addiction? I think um, there are a lot of different things, and a lot of times we blame um, an addiction on something that we've gone through. I think they, it promotes it, it, it mm -hmm. feeds into it, but it's how we perceive it and how we react to it. Mm -hmm. So one thing that happened when I was 11, I was molested by a family friend. Mm -hmm. It happened in my grandmother's house, and that was something that was really scary to me because this was a loved person mm -hmm. that everybody admired, and I didn't feel like as a kid that I could tell anybody that it happened. So I never told anyone until I was an adult. Mm. And um, that sets up this thing of you've got to self-protect. You know, you're a kid, but, you know, you've got to do something to self-protect you. And food was kind of a comfort in that. Mm. It was, um, I would go to that to not feel, right. uh, you know, the emotional issue that underlays all of that. Um, and you know, then built into that too, um, some issues as I was growing up as far as my mother had an um, emotional illness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I would go to food for comfort right. because my grandmother was a great cook, you know. <laughs> and, you know, when you went to grandma's house, you could have all the food you wanted, right. you know, and she, she loved and comforted with food. And, mm -hmm. and so then that set up this thing in my head that, you know, whenever I need something, I go to food for it. And right. Instead of going to God, even though I was saved when I was seven, mm. grew up in a Christian home, but there's something tangible about food. I think that's true of any addiction, mm -hmm. something tangible there that people go to because um, God doesn't seem as real. Okay. Well, I know you talk, too, about sugar addiction, and that's something that I know a lot of us can relate to. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened that prompted you to say, say it was an addiction and had to make some changes? What were some things that made you change that way? You know, change is a process, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the things you go through 
lead to that. But back in 1977, I was starting to gain a lot of weight. And I cried out to God and I said, how can I move this mountain of flesh? And he gave me a plan. Mm. Stop eating sugar, eat more meats, fruits, and vegetables, and stop eating so much bread. I thought, nice plan, God. How do you do that? And so for the next 30 years, I was in, the, so my second tagline on the book is, the first tagline is how I lost 250 pounds and stopped trying to earn God's favor. Mm -hmm. Well, that was part of the issue, you know, trying, trying, trying. So I would try these diets, mm -hmm. because in my mind, you go on a diet, right? right? And then when I would get done with the diet, I would reward myself mm -hmm. with sugar, uh -huh. of course, you know. Mm -hmm. I would think, okay, I'll, I'll lose 100 pounds, and then I can eat mammals oat milk cake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that would be my reward. Right. And then that would just set me back off on the track of gaining the weight back. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I went through a whole lot of issues, a whole lot of diets, a whole lot of things. And when I found myself regaining the weight after having lost quite a bit of weight, I started regaining the weight and I thought, I am in big trouble here. I have not fixed my brain. I actually had gastric bypass surgery wow. and mm -hmm. lost weight and then started gaining it back because I started eating the sugar again as soon as I could. Mm -hmm. And that's what really prompted me and said, you are in big trouble. And I was at a group where uh, a man was giving his testimony about um, being a 25-year sober alcoholic. And in that testimony, he said, alcohol is one molecule away from sugar. Alcohol is liquid sugar. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the turning point for me because even though I had not read about sugar addiction, this was like back in mm -hmm. before we, you know, we hear a lot now about sugar addiction, but I had not read about that at all, not researched it. But I thought an alcoholic gets free from alcohol by stopping drinking alcohol. If I am a sugar addict, I can get free of sugar by stopping eating sugar. Wow. And then I realized, that's what God told me 30 years ago. Oh my. Yeah. He's, he knew my weakness. Second yeah. Corinthians 12, 9 says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. He knew that. I, until I admitted my weakness, until I laid it on the altar, his power could not come in and activate oh, me. So powerful. Well, you know, and you have a book that's called Sweet Grace, and it's about your weight loss journey and what you have. We talked about that not only has it been a weight loss, but it's also been a transformation. And so we want to thank you for coming and just as encouraged to everybody that you, it's possible. Yes. to do this, but it's not possible to do it alone. That's right. You know, you need to have uh, accountability and really surrender to God. Yes. So we are so thankful that you came, and we'll Thank be you. right back.